What's up, people from the tube? Welcome back. Bunch of things. So today we're gonna release a series of videos. We're gonna start with video number one, and this is about leopard gecko breeding season. Is here. This is before the world got crazy and everything got destroyed. So the video that you're gonna see in the food footage is um, right at the beginning of uh, leopard gecko breeding season uh, for me starts in January, January, mid-January, February. Um, as I said, this is all before the craziness happened. On this first video, I'm gonna show you how the breeding take place. We're gonna be talking a little bit of how I set up my incubator and how everything goes for me. So let's stop talking and let's get at it. going guys Pancho here well I just realized that my female leopard gecko max no head tremper albino uh, was ovulating so I'm gonna show you how the breeding goes and it's gonna give me the opportunity to show you guys the whole process on how you get to breed leopard geckos so here we go Set up the incubator and I'm gonna show you guys how I do this and I need to make sure that the external temperature doesn't change what's happening in the incubator too much. I'm using the Sumid so one of the things that happened with this one this particular model is that the thermostat is on the base where the controllers are so unfortunately the reading that you get on that thermostat might not necessarily show what the actual temperature is going to be so this season i'm going to be breeding only for females and i need to have a temperature minus plus the um minus plus a degree I'm talking about music now um minus plus a degree at uh, minus plus a degree and that's a different that's a difficult word. I can't speak for my life today. What I was trying to say was, since I'm gonna be f incubating only for females, I need to have an incubation temperature of 80 degrees. I need to make sure that the incubator maintains the temperature constantly, that at all times I can keep control of that 80 degrees. So I'm gonna show you how to set it up. I'm gonna have to use a different thermometer. Uh, with this thermometer, I can ensure that the reading of the temperature is going to be exactly what I need to. When it comes to the incubator, it comes with the base of the incubator, comes with a, a lid, comes with this little foam, and if you can see, it has some rivets, and you can have water. Later on, when I have the clutches, I'm going to show you how I set up my containers on my incubation media. The first thing that I'm going to do, so I'm going to remove this. So 
some one in there. So once I got my water, bring my phone back. Phone in. Now what the phone does is once it maintains a little bit of water and also man the lighting is horrible. This will do so. I put a regular container with a lid on. I put it right in the middle. I'm sorry, I'm having to use one hand here. Alright, so what I like to do is that I like to set up the probe on top of the lid of the container, that empty container, there's not going to be eggs on that container. It's, that container is just to give me the right elevation for the probe, so the probe can actually give me the right reading at all times. Once the lid is there, set up. As you can see, so we got the lid in there. 68 degrees, humidity is at 81. Okay, so once again, got 69 degrees there, but I'm reading here, 70, 74.8, so that's what I was talking about, the major difference in between what, what the incubator is reading versus what the what the actual the other thermometer at the right height is really so I gotta give it a run time run it for a couple of weeks before I get my clutches and just make sure that the heat is in the right standard so for the next couple of days I need to go back and forward and, and just make sure that I got everything set up so right now what I'm gonna do is just make sure that I, the alarms are off because I don't want to be awakened in the middle of the night make sure that everything is working and functioning properly and then I get to give them a, a shot for a couple of weeks and see what's going on. The next is going to be us collecting the eggs and how I set up my media and how I get everything uh, together and show you how, how I like to do the things and I'm going to show you also how I document everything, everything that I do when the pairings happen, who are the parents, when do they get paired, when the clutches are expected, when the actual clutches are being collected, the hatchling time, everything, I document everything uh, in case that if I need to sell any of the offsprings, uh, to have the right information to provide to my customers. So, that being said, we're gonna keep moving on, I'm gonna keep adjusting, making sure that the that the incubator is, is functioning properly and checking everything out. Uh, I will see you guys in a, in a, few, in a few days. Alrighty, that's the brief view of the leopard gecko breeding season and how things happened. If you guys have any questions or want to get into more details, please hit me up in the comments and I will be happy to uh, answer whatever questions you guys have. Unfortunately, breeding season is over, so I'm gonna be editing all those videos and as they're coming around I'll be posting them. I hope you guys enjoyed it and once again if you guys have any questions just hit me up down in the comment and I'll be more than happy to help you guys out with any questions that you guys have. Thank you so very much for watching, like and subscribe. Pancho out!